Hi everyone. Today we're in my washroom. I'm giving you a tour to help you see the modifications I made as well as to help you think what changes you could be making to maximize your independence and keep the washroom safe with me. I hope you'll find this helpful. Before you continue, I suggest you get yourself a pen and a piece of paper to make some notes as we go along. Here we go with the tour. We're just outside my washroom. Here I keep a pair of crutches so they're handy for me to transfer from my electric wheelchair to the toilet. I actually own two pair. The other one I keep near the entrance to my home so it's right handy if a friend is taking me out to do my errands or taking me for a drive in their vehicle. And then to the left is the ironing board. My washing machine and dryer are set up in my bathroom and we'll get to that in more detail later in this video. The sink is immediately beside my shower. And if I'm honest with you, it was a big challenge figuring out what sink I could add and have in my shower and my bathroom. I needed one that was small. I needed it to be compatible with me sitting in a wheelchair washing my hands and I needed to be able to get out of the shower safely without the sink being added in the way. This bathroom was added to the main floor of my home when my disability became severe and I couldn't use the washroom upstairs. So this was making the best of a difficult situation. What I came up with was an RV plastic sink. I've had this in here since 2009. The sink is mounted on plywood. The local flooring store gave me a piece, a sample piece of vinyl flooring to act as the countertop so the plywood wouldn't wreck. And the hardware store had the adapter for the drain. It came with a one and a quarter inch drain and of course standard household plumbing when this was added was one and a half inch ABS. An adapter was easily purchased at the hardware store. You'll see there are a few other things sitting on my countertop. I haven't made this fancy. I wanted to show you real life. There's a trowel there that I've washed off here. I'm working on making a mount for the GPS on my wheelchair and I've used the sink to wash off my trowel as I filled in a few holes. You'll see my toothpaste is back there. Hand lotion is back there. That's really, really important because when you're sitting most of the day, you could become susceptible to pressure sores. I've also got mouthwash in there and I've got a special hand cream in the orange uh, container on the right that they wanted me to try at the pharmacy. I dry out during the winter and then I just start peeling and flaking. That's why that one was given to me to try. So the sink, it's a very basic faucet. I start with the cold water and then I add hot to it so it never gets so hot that I burn myself. And it's worked really well. There is a shutoff valve for the sink and shower. So the rest of the plumbing in the house can stay on if the fixture needs to be changed or repaired. And I certainly would recommend an RV sink if you're in a pinch for space 
and trying especially to retrofit a house with a bathroom. What we're looking at is the tank on my toilet. So there's toilet paper, air freshener, a male urinal, and two bottles of vinegar. I actually want to begin talking about bowel movements. This may not be your most favorite topic to talk about, but it's really important. If you don't have regular bowel movements, the germs and the toxins that your body's trying to get rid of actually can be reabsorbed through the colon and get back into your body. It's the same idea as when I was a boy and went to have my childhood surgery. I was given medicine in my bum to be absorbed. I would highly recommend that if you're a senior and you're starting to have problems with dates and times that you would keep a journal in the bathroom to keep track of how often you're having a bowel movement. And then I would be going back to your family doctor and asking if this is frequent enough or if you should be making changes to your diet or if you should be using medication that will cause bowel movements to occur. I use chronic pain medication. So what I did was modified my diet. I have a lot of salads and fiber and fruit in my diet so I would not need to use a stool softener. I do have one in the house so if I don't have a bowel movement every second day at the most then I do use it. With the chronic pain medication that I'm using I also have to drink a high amount of water, otherwise that also causes constipation. There is zero wiggle movement in my diet, or I will need to go on medication to encourage regular bowel movements. So it is possible to control with diet, but you must have a lot of self-discipline. The urinal that you're seeing is a male urinal. My hips and my knees are both very stiff in the nighttime hours. For me, it's just not worth the risk of falling and hurting myself to come to the toilet to pee at night. So I use the urinal and then in the morning I sterilize it first by rinsing it with water and then using the vinegar that you see there. I'm not circumcised and I also wash under my foreskin during the daytime to keep it clean. And I certainly wouldn't recommend circumcision just because you have a long-term physical disability. This is a look at the upper portion of my toilet. I want to start by talking about the value of the toilet safety frame to the left and to the right of the toilet. I purchased this 
after one of my hip surgeries. In 2009, both of my hip joints were operated on during the same operation. I purchased this so I would have the support I needed when sitting down on the toilet. At that point, there was no option for me to stand up to pee. Since then, my mobility actually worsened and this frame has been worth gold to me. I would certainly recommend some type of a support frame for anyone who has a long-term physical disability. There are different designs. This one does move as I'm showing. So when I go to sit down, I push both arms out to the side like this so they're firm and in one spot. This way, they're not moving unexpectedly. Sitting on the toilet is what is called a raised toilet seat. It raises the seat up three and a half inches. It's a fantastic option for short term use. It does come with its own arm supports. I first purchased this in 2007 when I was having my first hip surgery. There's certain restrictions and you're not supposed to bend certain ways. This was fantastic. But it became apparent that what I needed was for the long term. So I now want to show you the long-term option. What you're now looking at on the floor is called a toilevator. You could think of it as an elevator for the toilet. It provides the same three and a half inches of lift that the raised toilet seat provides. The reason I chose this is because it's designed for long-term disabilities. It's much, much, much easier to clean the toilet bowl without the raised toilet seat being in the way. The way this works is a wax seal secures this to the floor a second wax seal secures the toilet to this. No sewer fumes come into the house because of these two seals. And then a bolt goes from the mounting point on the floor where the three inch ABS toilet bowl connection was installed when the house was built up through the toilevator and then it bolts to the toilet the same as the toilet would have otherwise bolted directly to the ABS 3 inch toilet bowl connection. So you're basically exchanging it for longer bolts. I've used this for the past seven years. I recommend it without any hesitation whatsoever. It was easy to install. The kit it came with included the seals for the toilet. The hardest part of the job when it was installed was taking the water out of the toilet. The way you do this is with a rubber glove and a sponge. And you basically sponge it out one load at a time until the toilet is empty and you do need to clean off the ABS the the drain mount for the toilet before you put the new wax on there's even wax now that comes with a small ABS cup under it that helps center it in place for the drain it was approximately a 25 minute job to change this and get it installed. And I would say that the scale level 
needed for this is a beginner. I, there were plain instructions included with it and certainly the ease of cleaning it as well as maintaining my independence for me is worth it and the reason why I recommend the Toilet Vader over the raised toilet seat. What I'm showing you now is a hook that I added to the side of the toilet bowl tank. Now the hook isn't permanently connected to the toilet. The way I secured the hook in place was the lead of the toilet holds it in place. It's an over the door hook. So instead of being over the door, it's actually over the edge of the tank. And of course, the lid of the toilet weighs more than enough to keep it in place. What it's holding are two things and they're both very important to have in the washroom. The first is a reacher. I can't bend right, but by having the reacher here, I have peace of mind that if I drop the toilet paper roll or I drop something else, I can easily retrieve it off the floor. The second item is actually a gardening pad for when you're bending down and weeding or planting. I adapted it for here in my washroom for the season in my life where someone was coming to my home to help me shower. I have ceramic tiles on my bathroom floor. The use of this knee pad made it much more comfortable for the home care worker as they help me wash my legs and my feet. While I'm on the topic, I do want to tell you it was done respectfully and if it is that you do need help showering, it's encouraged to do as much as you can yourself and then the personal support worker does what you can't. So if your arms and hands work, it's expected that you would wash your genitals yourself as well as your chest and arms. You know, if your hands don't work, it's understandable, but home care workers are taught to encourage independence. You are not treated as a stripper if you do need the help with showering. And normally when you come on a home care service, Several workers are sent to you for you to speak up and say, I like that person more than the other one. And most of the time it just comes down to interpersonal skills and what's a good match. The same as that your peer group would be a few people and not the whole world and you're going to hit it off better with some people more than others. So if you do need home support, I want to assure you that you don't need to feel ashamed with showering. If you do feel modest or self-conscious, some people choose to shower with a bathing suit on and certainly a home care worker will honor this. Personally, I've now had seven orthopedic surgeries. Candidly speaking, hips are next to my penis. I understand that the person was coming to help me and I didn't have an issue with someone helping me shower. I understand not everyone's the same as me. Um, so the option of wearing a bathing suit exists if you are self-conscious. And I bought this pad to show respect for my worker. I've actually 
discontinued my in-home care. Ultimately, the care I received was funded by Ontario Canada's health care. There's been very, very steep funding cutbacks that have repeatedly caused my hours to be cut back and cut back. I do my physiotherapy at the YMCA swimming pool. I asked the YMCA to permanently make one of their showers accessible for my needs and other patrons who are physically disabled. They agreed to it, so it now makes more sense for me to use their showering opposed to someone coming to the house. This is my shower. As my disability worsened, I added to it and the tools I used to manage showering. There's lots going on here, so let's just dive right in. I have three grab bars installed. There's one to the left and to the right of entering the shower vertically, and there's one installed horizontally that's part way down the screen. So I use the two to get into the shower and the third one as extra support as well as something I can grab onto if I was starting to lose my balance. All three have been very much worth it and I'm exceptionally pleased with the decision to install them. When I shower, I hang the towel I'm going to dry myself off with on the grab bar that's naturally handy when I get out. You'll see that it's the furthest away from the tap controls. That's how I happen to exit my shower. Your layout could be different, but I've put the towel where it's naturally for me to reach to it. I use a handheld shower head so that I can point the water where I need it because when I'm showering I'm remaining seated. So I use it to wash my hair, my back, my chest, my genitals, as well as my legs and feet. And then I have help when needed where I can't reach for it. But to promote independence, standing up in the corner of the shower chair is a long arm sponge. This is the accessibility tool available to promote independence for showering. Certainly with the length of my arms, I can reach my feet and back using this sponge and for me I'm grateful I only ever want to be asking for help where I need it. This sponge was part of a kit. Another part that was in the kit was the grabber I already showed you. I leave my shampoo sitting on the shower chair and there's a soap dispenser attached to the wall to the right of the controls. I would recommend that you invest in a good quality control for the water temperature, especially if you have problems with your hands. I don't want you to get burnt by the shower. There actually is an anti-scalding valve available that will prevent the water going to the shower to ever go above a certain degree temperature. So burns can be prevented that way, but even when you're in the shower, you want to make sure that you're not going to burn yourself with the water being too hot. So I would suggest a high quality knob that allows you more control over changing your water temperature. The 
face cloth, I hang off the handle on the left side of my shower chair. I removed the right hand side one so I could easily get in and out of the shower as well as spin around for when I had home care help washing my legs and feet. The final part I want to talk about is the value of the metal legs on the shower chair. I wore out two shower chairs. The city water was extremely hard on them. The plastic cracked. The second one that wore out, I almost hit my head when the plastic was cracking, but I was able to support myself with the grab bar and ended up not falling. The metal legs have never been a problem for me, so I highly recommend you save yourself the risk and start with a metal frame shower chair. There also is the option of bolting something to the wall and folding it down when you go to shower and then folding it back up for other people that live with you. It depends what your needs are and the available cash you have. I certainly recommend the grab bars and the shower chair for the safety if you're having problems standing or keeping your balance. This is the floor of my shower and I especially want to draw attention to the non-slip mats that I added down. And they've been worth their weight in gold. With my hip and knee challenges, falling was so often on my mind and concerning me. These mats made the shower safe for me to use. And I've never taken a fall in the shower because of the grip they give me when the shower's all wet. This is a portable space heater I added to the washroom. The reason I added it was for use in the winter time when I was showering so I would be warm enough when I got out of the shower. What I like about it is two things. First, for safety, there's a red light that turns on when the heater is in use. I like that visual indication so at a glance I can see if the heater is on or off. And secondly, this is an oil filled heater. I like that it heats the oil and the oil begins continues to radiate the heat even after the heating element has shut off. If you do add one in, give yourself plenty of thought and consideration to safety so you won't cause a short circuit or cause yourself to be electrocuted. This is plugged into one of them GFI outlets that have a test and reset on them and that does give protection for being near water. I don't always use this. Sometimes I turn the hose up to 73 Fahrenheit so I'm more than warm enough when I get out of the shower. I did want to mention this just to help you think what do you need to make showering at home comfortable. It certainly doesn't use a lot of electricity for the 10 minutes it takes to shower. Even when I finish showering, if I turn this off, it continues to radiate heat until I'm more than finished my dressing and drying off again. This is my laundry basket. Because of my physical disability, I installed a shelf 
on the wall for the laundry basket to sit. Beside it are my clothes pegs and as well my dryer sheets. Resting on the laundry basket is my gym bag. The reason it's there is so it's not on the floor and so I won't fall. I'm ultimately going to put a small hook on the wall for the bag to hang but that's what makes the most sense in my mind to store the bag that I carry, my bathing suit and towel to and from the, the YMCA for when I'm there doing my physiotherapy. The laundry basket is at an easy height for me to access it using my wheelchair. If your disability is such that you can't bend or you don't have lower legs or can't use them, there's nothing wrong in asking for help. Where I position this and the various other things in my bathroom were done with the thought pattern of maximizing my independence. You know, I'm a 38 year old man. I'm not keen to be giving away my life in what I can be doing for myself. So this is how that basket ended up coming to be on the wall and then my gym bag there for safety. When I arrive home from the pool, I hang my bathroom or my swimming trunks and the towel up in here just to finish air drying. The YMCA does have a machine that helps spin the water over the pool. So there's only a little bit of moisture coming into the air compared to before when all my laundry was air dried. This is a look at my stacked washing machine and dryer. It is also in the washroom. The reason I chose a stacking washing machine and dryer was because of space. It would be also possible to install these on approximately 18 inch stands and you would be able to access both while using your electric wheelchair. I want to point out a safety tip. It's extremely important to leave the washing machine door opened so it may dry out and not grow mold. This is applicable for this front loading style because of the rubber gasket that makes it watertight when the door is closed. For the dryer, I chose natural gas. In the long run, it's far less money to run the dryer using natural gas for the heat source than it is to pay for electricity to produce the heat. The dryer still needs electricity, but that's only to run a motor that makes the clothes spin round and round. There were various prices of stacked washer and dryers. I kept shopping until I found a good deal it was only an extra $100 to have the natural gas dryer compared to the electricity counterpart. Some of them were an extra $600 to $800 surcharge. The natural gas model isn't stocked, it's made to order. I had to wait about three weeks to get it to me. Ultimately, it worked out really well. Before this, I was air drying the clothes in my home and the humidity was actually causing the skin in my groin to break down. As soon as I started using the dryer, the problem cleared up immediately. There are a few other considerations with setting up a washing machine and dryer. You have to be able to vent it and you need to have the electricity for 
running it as well as the water supply. This has worked out well for me. There are two in one units available where the same machine does both the washing and the drying. They are significantly more money if space is a problem or it would be far easier and make sense with your disability to pay the higher price up front. I would suggest you think about doing it. When I went to the store to select this model, they were really good. They listened to me and then they said, this is the product that you're describing. So I encourage you to have a dialogue and ask for the help you need to select the model that's going to make you happy and maximize your independence. I hope this has been helpful to you. As always, I want to thank you for the time that we spent together today. I really appreciate it. And I hope this is able to help make a positive impact in your life and get you thinking through what you can do to help yourself make the most of the situation that you're in. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.